What's going on everyone? Anthony here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, as you can tell, we are working on the GR Corolla today, finishing up a few last minute preps to get the car ready uh, to go to uh, Laguna Seca here. Uh, so what I'm going to be installing today, uh, as you can see right there, are the Varus Engineering Brake Duct Kits. Uh, if you guys are unaware, uh, the core model does not come with the brake ducts. I believe that is only the Circuit Edition and the Marizo Edition. But even then, the brake duct kits for those cars are kind of like, eh. Uh, it just really directs air in the general area of the caliper. It's not directly onto the caliper itself, which is why I didn't want to go with the OEM one. Uh, with the Varus Engineering Kit, it replaces the dust shield, the factory dust shield behind the rotor and gives you one that will clamp on a hose. That way, cool air will be directly shot on to the uh, rotor itself. Uh, I'm not going to do a full in-depth how-to. I'm going to go through it step by step as much as I can, but Varus Engineering has their own video out, which is way more detailed than mine. Uh, it is way too hot for me to be making a step-by-step -step video right now. Uh, so uh, follow along with me as I go ahead and finish this off and then we are going to take the car over to Mark's shop and then we are going to do the oil change and uh, possibly load up the car. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get moving. Okay, so there's going to be a few things you're going to want to do. Obviously, you're going to want to take these two 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper to the caliper bracket. Obviously, first take off the wheel. Uh, then you're going to need to take off this 30 millimeter 12 point axle nut, uh, which I have already busted loose. Uh, it's a little bit hard to get on and off, but uh, they do offer the option of replacing these axle nuts. Uh, or they give you an extra axle nut because you can only take these off so many times before you actually do have to replace them. As you can see, it's, this is my second time taking it off and it's already kind of like hard to get back on. I probably should have opted uh, to get the new ones. Uh, I didn't think taking it off only twice was going to be this big of an issue, but it definitely is. So I highly recommend you just go ahead and take them up on the offer to, to go ahead and just replace these axle nuts. Uh, so yeah, uh, once you go ahead, take the two 17 millimeters off, you're going to want to hang the caliper uh, with a bungee cord or a rope or something zip tied. That way it's just not hanging from the brake line. Uh, take off the 30 millimeter 12 point, take off the rotor, and then on the back there will be three 19s holding in the hub. Uh, but I'll get to that once we get there. So yeah. All right, once you get the three uh, 19 millimeters loose, uh, just go ahead and pull off the hub. Hopefully the, you're watching this uh, within a few, uh, only a year or so of the car being out. So the hub actually came out fairly easily. Just go ahead, pull that out. Uh, go ahead and set that to the side, now facing down like that. Go ahead, pull off the factory heat shield. Uh, while you're in here, you just go ahead and clean off any dirt or grime that's in here, uh, that way, it makes sure the hub constantly comes out pretty easily. Uh, but let me go ahead and get the Varus engineering plate. Okay, this is the one of the Varus engineering plates. They are left and right. They aren't labeled. However, uh, you want to make sure you have the carbon fiber duct facing towards the back of the car. So it's like this away from the caliper. Uh, go ahead, test fit everything. Make sure everything fits the way it should. Slide the bolts in to hold it in place. And there you go. Uh, they also provide this little padding uh, because once you put this plate on, this part right here kind of rubs up against the, um, what is it, the speed sensor. So they go ahead and give you this, that way you can wrap around the speed sensor so that way it doesn't rip through that. Uh, whenever you're turning or driving or whatever, or just vibrations constantly wrapping around it. So let me go ahead, put this back on, see where this sits, see where it rubs up against, rubs up more or less right around here. Uh, best way to do it is just go ahead, peel it off, and then do it up and down. That way you get a good amount of coverage uh, if the plate moves around too much and it looks like it's right about here. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it around like so, protecting the wire from chafing up against the duct. Hopefully I got that on the right very first pass. So, yep, 
good to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the hub back on and uh, we'll see it once it's reassembled. All right, once you get your hub back on, just make sure everything is torqued back down to spec. The 319s on the back, the axle nut right here, and then don't forget to re-punch in that divot uh, so that way it doesn't vibrate loose. Uh, so yeah, uh, once you go ahead, button this up, uh, I'll go ahead, do the other side, and then I'll show you how I route the duct and then install, or route the hoses and then install the duct on the front bumper. So let me go ahead and finish this up, finish the other side, and then we'll move on to that. All right, what's going on guys? Feature Anthony here. Uh, so unfortunately, all the uh, footage from me showing you how to route the tubing through the car has been corrupted. But as I said, this really wasn't a full DIY to begin with. Uh, as mentioned, Varys has their own DIY video up on their channel, which is probably way more detailed than mine. Uh, so, but pretty much is straightforward, right? The ducts bolt onto the bumper. There is a screw there towards the bottom of the bumper at that very, very bottom gap. Uh, you just basically unscrew it, put the duct there, and then screw it back in. You are gonna have to trim a little bit of the under tray, uh, not the under under tray, but there is a, another under tray uh, above uh, the main under tray that blocks everything. You have to trim that just a little bit. It's probably about this long you have to trim uh, just so the duct clears on both sides. Uh, it was really simple. I just used the Dremel for that and or a cutting wheel, uh, a cutting wheel attachment on a Dremel uh, to cut that off and it just came right off. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and head over to Mark's shop to do the oil change. All right, guys. So, well, as you can see, I went to go get a haircut. I am here at Garage Guys Automotive with Mark. Uh, we're about to put the car into the air. We're going to go ahead, get it up, change the oil now that the brake ducts are done. Uh, I'm also going to be installing these parts that Fortunato sent over. And that is these rear uh, top hats for the uh, coilover or the struts uh, for the rear. Uh, apparently, one of the weak points in the Corolla is the top, the factory top hats. If you guys don't remember from my factory video or my coilover video, sorry, the factory top hat on the car is something that you have to retain for the struts that they provide. Uh, but I guess somebody, I think it was Limit Plus One went on track in their factory one, the bearing in it just like kind of broke or whatever. I'll put a picture up here in a bit. Uh, so then Fortunato have been developing these on the side. Uh, so now all we gotta do is remove the struts and then replace the factory top hat or whatever cover you want the mounts with these Fortunato ones. So this shouldn't take too long, should just be a couple bolts. Bolt that on, put it back up and then uh, yeah, ready to go. Uh, this is the oil I'm going to be using to change the oil. AMS oil, Dominator, racing oil. I went with the 5W20 uh, because they don't make a Dominator in 0W20. Uh, racing oil is, or Dominator, sorry. Dominator is their racing oil, so it has a high zinc content. It's meant for high abuse. Uh, if you guys are well aware, I'd use nothing but AMS oil Dominator in all my race car thus far, so I'm not going to stop now. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get the car in the air and get started. Still cool, yep, still fresh. This car only has 5,000 miles, and I've already changed the oil like four times. This will be time number five. It's been a year since I changed this car. It's a long time. Dang, 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 so, you didn't even change it before that track day you went on? Did I? Did I? I don't even remember. <laughs> I may have. You know what? Yeah, I did. I did change it before the track day, and I just never changed the sticker because I still had like 3,000 miles left on the sticker. So. You and Jake are doing another one in December, right? It depends if I can afford tires. No. When is it in December? Jake's the one that bought Jake's the one that's been bugging me about it. But, I mean, Jake's Cause. pretty much ready to go, dude. Because I got uh, Eagles Canyon Raceway at the beginning of December, so if it contradicts then, I can't join you guys. I, I, know, I know Jake's pretty dialed in. Right? He's, yeah. He's just waiting. He's, that blue looks good. He's off and on about pulling the trigger on that on that mechanical diff that uh -huh. he wants to get. He's off and on, off and on, off and on. Should I get this? Should I get that? I'd say get the diff. Should I get the three? Should I get a three liter? Should I get this? Gosh, I could boost it. He wants the car boosted by this time next year. Next year. Okay. He's just waiting. On the, he's just waiting to close on the house. Hmm. So that's that's really what's that's, like, that's definitely what he should be focusing that's, that's on. Really, that's really what's hindering him from pulling any kind of major trigger. Okay, so we got the strut out. This is the part we are replacing right here. Real simple. You just got to take this nut out, the 217s, to take the uh, the strut out itself. 
this nut and then you're just going to go ahead and replace it with this one so this inside part is what's failing on the track cars uh, as I mentioned you saw I saw in the picture how bad it was but yeah so this should be real simple real straightforward alright guys and that does it for that uh, the car is basically fully prepped it is on the alignment rack right now we're gonna put some last-minute touches on the alignment make sure everything's squared away uh, but yeah I mean I probably should have shown more of that Fortunato install but it's really straightforward guys like if you need a video to install that you probably should just let somebody install it for you it's really simple it was those two 17 millimeters that hold it to the car and then that one up top that holds the uh, the the mount to the strut itself take it replace it that's it done replace it you are gonna have to adjust the height a little bit because it does sit a little bit shorter now uh, because the uh, uh, the mount itself is shorter than the factory one but overall fits great uh, no issues whatsoever on the alignment rack after that we're gonna go ahead load it up on the trailer and then uh, yeah I guess the next video I will see you guys it out out in California uh, this is my first competition ever everything else I have done to this date has just been HPDE which is basically just going out learning having fun no real like uh, competition in the air you're just competing against yourself so uh, yeah guys uh, yeah I think that'll wrap up this video hope you guys enjoyed and until next time later